Welcome, everyone. We want to thank you for joining us to celebrate a great day today in St. Paul and a great day for solar. District Energy is thrilled to celebrate the start of the, this landmark project. Advancing energy integration has been a key part of District Energy's 30-year history of integrating a large-scale solar thermal project into our company. It's long been on our to-do list. Even when I consider the scale of this project and all the things that we've done, it gives me some pause. This installation will not single-handedly reach our goal of 100% renewable energy, but it is a large step towards that goal. So what does one megawatt of solar thermal mean? Well, there's a technical. It's basically 144 solar panels that are commercial grade that are sitting on the solar on the river center roof that you see behind me, which capture the solar energy in the form of hot water that is then integrated into the river center system and it meets the energy needs of the river center. And then when we produce excess energy, it goes out to the grid to the broader district energy system. So one megawatt of solar thermal means something to technology and to the environment, but just as important is what it means to the industry, to St. Paul, to our state, to the country. For the industry and our country, this means an operational showcase of a large scale solar thermal project, a first of its kind project that integrates with a large district energy system, serving more than one building. To St. Paul and Minnesota, it means continuing in its tradition of energy and environmental leadership it means green jobs through the hard work of our partners, TKDA, Sheehy, Pioneer Power, Johnson Controls, Amarect, and Gephardt, whose hard work built a network of high-performance collectors, the American steel structure that it sits on, and the American piping that connects it all together to deliver the energy. Not to mention getting it done in a very challenging Minnesota summer, uh, winter, summer I wish, <laughs> <laughs> but we're getting there. Most of all, it shows the immense potential of partnership, starting with the great teams at the Minnesota Office of Energy Security, with the city of Minneapolis that are part of the solar communities, and we are so grateful for the support of Congresswoman McCollum and all that she has done, and our diligent state and federal delegations who continue to advocate for an integrated, secure, and sustainable energy future. And of course, this project is only possible because of the partnership with, district, with the Department of Energy, together with District Energy St. Paul, together with the City of St. Paul, together with the River Center. And I'd also want to thank our great team at District Energy. This team's worked very hard to put this all together. So today we celebrate another milestone in local and renewable energy. And just as District Energy was founded through the visionary leadership of a great mayor, we once again owe a debt of gratitude to another great mayor and great leadership, Chris Coleman. Thanks, Ken. It is a, uh, it, it's a, one of the things I like to do in St. Paul is just kind of close my eyes every once in a while and just have a, a vision of St. Paul come into my head. And you always kind of think about the great, the great skyline of our city, the, the cathedral or the capital, uh, the first bank building and the one flashing in the sky, uh, landmark tower behind us. Well, now when I look at this installation behind us, I think of a new uh, rooftop a new part of the skyline of the city of St. Paul, but one that just says so much about the partnerships, the commitment of this community to a clean, renewable energy uh, future, uh, to jobs, uh, to great, you know, all of the things that came together to make this project possible. It is really kind of fun to just look out over this facility. Uh, I think that we uh, just, uh, we were trying to figure out whether it's actually up and running yet this morning, is there, if there was enough sun, but we think that there is. Uh, I don't know if we have confirmation of that yet. Uh, but it is just, it's, yes, we do. Yes, we do. We're up and running this morning, enough sun shining through the, the, the hazy sky. Uh, it's really, it's, it's really incredible. Ken mentioned that, uh, there was a previous mayor that had some uh, visionary leadership. And of course that was George Latimer, but ever since George and a couple of other folks got together and really started thinking about how, uh, St. Paul could show the way St. Paul could be a leader. Uh, there have been just a whole host of folks that have come uh, uh, since then that have, uh, that, that have been a part of this. Anders Reidecker, who led District Energy for, for many, many years, of course, uh, led to Ken Smith and his great leadership. Um, it is it's really exciting. But when I look at that roof, I also think about the men and women that were working on that project. 
uh, just incredible, you know, especially in these tough times where so many of the building trades uh, members are on the bench. It's always good to see some of our pipe fitters and our electricians and others that, that were able to be there. And they were laying American steel and American products on that roof. Uh, it really it represents so much more than the uh, the energy that will be produced there. Uh, it really speaks to how we as a city come together, take advantage of the partnerships from the federal uh, from the federal and the state level, uh, and really do the best. I, I think you know so often uh, St. Paul gets sig singled out for what it can do uh, and how it does things differently. This is the very a lot of people have solar projects, a lot of people have district energy systems. This is the first si uh, project of this kind where the solar is integrated into the district energy system in North America. Uh, and that is a really amazing accomplishment for our community and I thank all of you that were involved in that. It isn't possible without partnerships and it isn't uh, possible without great leadership. Our congressional delegation has been just amazing. Uh, our our Senate, uh, Senators Klobuchar and Franken, uh, Al Junkie, who represents, uh, represent, or <laughs> Senator Franken's office is here, a newest member of his team. We want to thank you for being here. Uh, and uh, I couldn't say enough about the partnership with our great Congresswoman Betty McCollum, who uh, time in and, uh, again and again is always there fighting for her constituents, fighting for the city of St. Paul, fighting for a new energy future. Uh, she's been a great partner, and at this point, we'd like to hear from our Congresswoman. Thank you. And uh, happy St. Patrick's Day. Thank you. <laughs> I'm happy to be standing here. Isn't it a great day? <laughs> it's, a, it's a great day. And um, I'm excited that we've all gathered here to celebrate it. We have sunflowers. We have the sun in the sky. We have solar panels, and I want to thank the City of St. Paul with the leadership of Mayor Coleman and the Council for not being afraid, not being afraid to look at new ways in which we can make not only our city more livable, but our country more energy efficient and more energy independent. Ann Hunt, you know, staff is really important, and as you pointed out, we've got staff here from both uh, the other uh, Senate offices here. I want to thank all of them, especially my staff, for working on this. Ken Smith and District Energy for always being willing to be a science teacher. <laughs> always willing to educate. And when you educate, that's how you create the partnerships. That's how you create the trust to make uh, what's necessary in the city of St. Paul to take these, uh, you know, leadership examples on clean energy. As uh, Chris pointed out, this project truly is remarkable. It is the largest solar thermal project in the upper Midwest. That makes Minnesota a leader. These solar panels are evidence that the Recovery and Reinvestment Act is changing America, one rooftop at a time, one community at a time. Now, the city of St. Paul is showcasing what is cutting edge leadership in the energy technology and I believe the future economy. We provide clean, local, renewable energy that saves consumers money while reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Now, the Recovery Act that I referred to, over $90 billion had been invested in what Time Magazine called the most ambitious legislative energy direction in history. This was at a time when America was at crisis, we put people back to work and we invested in saving taxpayers uh, dollars and making sure that we reduced America's dependency on oil. And we all know what's happening with oil prices right now. Minnesota currently spends $16 billion importing energy from out-of-state sources, and that's mostly coal and oil. By using this pioneer solar technology for thermal energy, District Energy provides a more efficient model that keeps our energy dollars in our local economy and it makes us less dependent on foreign oil sources. The Minnesota project, as I said, will reduce carbon dioxide emissions by 900 million pounds a year. That's the equivalent of taking 90 vehicles off the street. Our investments here in clean, renewable energy and the economy are clearly the right thing to do. They're the right thing to do for the air that we breathe and it's the right thing to do for our future economy. So I just want to 
point out that it's partnerships that made this happen. The federal government can and should be a partner with cities and organizations in clean energy initiatives like this. I was proud that I voted for the Recovery Act. I'm even more proud today because the steps that we took here in St. Paul and all around this country will make us more energy independent and I support and will work hard for continued investments in our clean energy economy. So congratulations to everybody who worked on this project and future generations and school kids at the Science Museum are going to say, we're pretty smart here in Minnesota and really smart in St. Paul. Our next speaker is Bill Grant, Deputy Commissioner, uh, Commerce Commissioner for Energy and Telecommunications. Uh, many of you know uh, Bill for, for his great work with the Isaac Walton League. Uh, it, uh, he's been a great partner for a lot of our environmental initiatives in the city of St. Paul. Uh, again, just a reflection of new leadership at the state level and the administration. It's so nice to have a governor that understands the importance of these issues. Uh, and uh, his leadership, I think, is going to be absolutely critical. Uh, we look forward to this partnership. And Bill, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks. Thanks, for, thanks very much, Mayor Coleman. And on behalf of Governor Dayton, I'd like to congratulate the City of St. Paul, District Energy, uh, the River Center, and really the people of St. Paul for this tremendous accomplishment. Uh, you know, this is really the result of a unique partnership between USDOE, Solar, City, Solar America Cities, uh, and, and the City of St. Paul, District Energy, uh, and the River Center. Uh, it's benefited from a million dollar stimulus grant, as the Congresswoman uh, mentioned, that was uh, flowed through our office. And we're uh, so proud to see uh, this, this project uh, now coming to fruition. Number of noteworthy things about this project. Uh, the District Energy Solar Thermal uh, uh, System is the first example in, in, uh, in North America, as has been mentioned, of a large scale thermal, solar thermal adoption uh, project like this. It is the largest known system um, in the state and, uh, and in the Midwest at 1.1 uh, megawatt equivalent. Uh, as the first solar thermal system to be integrated within a district energy system uh, in the U.S., there is a real potential here for market transformation, a real opportunity to show how this can be done in other places, particularly in climates like ours. Uh, it's an investment in solar uh, that contributes to uh, uh, in a, a, a real diversified energy system um, and uh, one that we're really striving to create here across the board. Of course, solar uh, has, has historically been more expensive than other uh, um, more mainstream sources of electricity and, and, and uh, thermal uh, power, but it's, it's certainly uh, showing us uh, now that it's coming forward as an energy source that's really going to contribute meaningfully uh, to our energy system going forward. And it's projects like this uh, that are really showing the way. Uh, this is an investment in energy uh, sustainability and in energy security. Uh, while solar is, is, is uh, again, uh, still on the cusp of being competitive with other sources, uh, we're really now moving in a, in a, in a positive direction, uh, both for the state and for the country. And uh, for, the, for all those reasons, uh, the governor uh, is uh, happy to share with you today the success of this project and uh, looks forward to uh, many more um, uh, cooperative, cooperative uh, arrangements and ventures just like this one to make our uh, state and our nation more energy secure. Thanks very much. Uh, obviously, this wouldn't be possible, but for the fact that the River Center itself has become one of the leading models in this country for how you have a convention and visitors uh, facility uh, that includes the, the arena, uh, and, and it's a great facility in and of itself, uh, but it is getting better and better every day with the green strategies, our recycling strategies in the facility. Uh, in this new uh, installation, uh, it really, I think, hopefully will allow us to continue to promote that facility uh, in ways that we haven't been able to before. <coughs> Carolyn kirk is our great partner over there, and we'd love to hear, hear from Carolyn at this time. Thank you, Mayor Coleman. It is an honor to be here in such distinguished company today. Your support, all of your support, shows how important this milestone is to our city, the state of Minnesota, and our energy future. 
In the tourism and meetings industry, sustainability ideas started to gain traction in late 2008 and many convention centers had a decision to make. Either consider going green just another fad or evaluate their buildings and the impact they were having on the environment and then formulate a plan. As all of you know, uh, we opted for the latter and realized there was a lot we could do to improve our sustainability efforts. In the spring of 2009, St. Paul River Center embarked on a mission to become a regional leader in sustainability. An ambitious yet strategic plan was put into place that has already helped us cut our trash in half and more than triple our recycling rate in less than two years. We became one of the first convention centers in the nation to compost in public areas. Compost now has become our largest recycled item on campus. In changing the culture, the entire building had to be educated on simple things, like realizing that the paper towel you're drying your hands with in the lunchroom isn't really trash, it's compostable, not garbage. We've uh, replaced over 900 light fixtures in the River Center parking ramp, uh, which has cut its electricity usage nearly in half. And we will be adding electric car charging stations to the ramp this summer, and we're not done yet. Meeting planners are becoming more cognizant of selecting those cities that have convention centers that operate with the environment in mind. It is especially important to the meeting planner whose association deals with sustainability issues, groups like the Midwest Organic and Sustainable Education Service, and the American Fisheries Society. Many of these meeting planners are really impressed, not only that we have these programs, but how committed we are to these efforts. And of course, our most recent addition, the Solar Thermal Array, is really a great model because it benefits our complex and the city. Not only will we be taking in energy, we will also be exporting it for use in other buildings. To us, caring about our environment isn't just good business, it's good for all of us. And I'm so proud to stand here today to represent Visit St. Paul and the St. Paul River Center as hosts of this powerful new example of renewable energy. We are committed to being leaders in the sustainability movement and we're dedicated to helping preserve our energy, future, and the environment. Thank all of you for being here today. It's great to be able to share this with so many people. One, two, three.